Cool. So, um, yeah, so as we've now mentioned several times, um, uh, the free hosting option is going to be going away for Meteors, meaning you cannot like type just Meteor deploy, da 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 da, da and it'll be hosted to Meteor.com, which has been widely used for, you know, uh, test apps, MVPs, demo apps, personal apps, package demo sites, whatever. So, uh, it's becoming an issue where, well, where do I host my, my apps, especially if at a low cost um, or, you know, even for free. So there are many, many options out, out there. Obviously, DigitalOcean is one option. Um, and obviously, Galaxy is, is an option. And Galaxy is the main hosting company by the company behind Meteor, uh, Meteor Development Group. So what I thought I would do is walk through the process of how do you, you know, deploy to Galaxy? Um, and I just want to be clear, a couple things I want to be clear before we, I'm actually going to do the deployment right here, is one, um, the deployment that we're going to walk through is the type of deployment that you want to do for a personal site, like a demo site, a test site, not for a, you know, production site. That's a completely different type of ball game and where you want to work with somebody who's more of a specialist. But it's great for somebody who is sort of beginner, intermediate level developer, and you have an app, and you want it to be out in the world, and you want it to be able to, uh, you know, support maybe a reasonably large amount of users coming to visit it. So, uh, and the great news is, if you use something like Galaxy, uh, it'll you'll be able to to, sk to scale it up. Same thing with something like DigitalOcean, Heroku, and so forth. They have ways to scale it up. So, uh, but that's not something we're going to talk about here. The other thing I just mentioned, the reason I put it in here, so I wouldn't forget, is the concept of deploying first. So even if you're somebody who's new to, de new to coding, or if you've just started coding your app, um, one of the things that might seem counterintuitive if you're not a developer is one of the first things you actually want to do is you want to deploy. Because until you have deployed, you actually really don't know what you built. And you, there are things that you are not going to discover until you deploy. So uh, deploying uh, early and often, that, that's just a general rule. So let's, uh, let's get started here before we just start talking don't get anything done. So, um, all right, so let me get out of this, uh, exit this full screen view, and uh, what I'm gonna do is, I'm actually gonna walk through a tutorial that I wrote up, and uh, I posted the link to it in the comments, and uh, basically that's what we're gonna follow for uh, uh, you know, doing this uh, deployment. So the first thing we wanna do is we just wanna create a media app. So uh, I'm gonna go in here, um, have my uh, the directory, let me bump up the text size a little bit here. And when you want to create a Meteor app, for those of you who are new to Meteor, uh, you just literally type Meteor create, and you know, we're just gonna, we can call it whatever you want, we're just gonna call this app, you know, deploy me. So deploy me, that's gonna be the name of our app. And that's all you have to do. Hit return, and Meteor does its thing. Um, this should hopefully not take too long. Um, <laughs> and so now, that's great, so now we've created a simple Meteor app, and we can go into our uh, app here, and just to make sure that you know everything is working as we expected uh, before we deploy it, let's make sure it runs locally. So uh, it's going to do its thing again. Let me kind of set that to the side. I'm going to open up another tab here, and uh, by default, Meteor is going to deploy to a local host 3000. So if you can't see that right there. Zoom out, and it takes a minute here for it to do it. Anytime you're building your app and for the first time around, it takes a little bit longer, but then that build process, when it does it over again, it goes much faster. So as you can see, this is just the default Meteor app that you get when you create a Meteor app by default, nothing special. But at least we know this is now what we want to eventually see uh, live uh, in production. So uh, I'm gonna quit out of that because we're, we're done with that, and now I'm gonna go back to my, uh, our tutorial. And we're going to see, okay, so what is our next step? Well, the next step, we want to go and sign up uh, for Galaxy. So we can, the way, uh, the place you go to sign up for Galaxy is you can go to Meteor.com and you can find, uh, this is the link. If you go to Meteor.com, there's also a link on the homepage, but, uh, you know, if you, just so you know where it is. Uh, and I've already signed up, but uh, let me actually make sure that I can show you the, what you want to make sure you select is the basic option. So that's the free option. Uh, don't select these uh, unless you have a lot of money. Um, so uh, select that one, continue. Uh, now, I, I've already signed up, but uh, if you sign up, you'll have to fill out information. I definitely recommend that you uh, 
create a developer account before you uh, do this. So that's just a media, general media developer account. Uh, if you haven't done that, you, again, you just go to media.com, sign up for developer account. Otherwise, you're going to have to log in and create the, use the same information um, you know, twice. So uh, you don't want to have to do that. Okay, so uh, let's go back to our, uh, this is like our first step, uh, create, basically create a media, media account. Now, what gets confusing here is what you would expect and what I expected is, okay, so perfect, I signed up for Galaxy. Um, you know, I expect I'm gonna go to Galaxy and, and uh, you know, create an app, right? Uh, no, that's not what happens. Basically, um, at this point, you're doing, doing effectively everything from your app. Basically, what you have now done is you have informed Galaxy that you have an account. So now when you do something with the command line, it's gonna say, oh, oh, I know who that person is. Okay, all right, you're cool. All right, I'm gonna let you uh, deploy that thing because you know, you're, you know, you've signed up, whatever. I have a credit, credit card info. Um, so at this point, we're kind of not, we're not done with Galaxy, but we're, not most, we're only gonna come back to our Galaxy once we deploy or once there's a problem and we wanna see what, what the issue is. So the first thing we actually want to do now is want to add a MongoDB database. And here's a little bit, you know, in my opinion, for example, anybody who's worked with like Heroku, that's just an add-on. You go to Heroku, nice add-on, add, add yeah, MongoDB or whatever. Um, this is probably a reason, you know, one reason because that they don't support the database is because this is, this is very early days for Galaxy. So I'm sure that's something that's going to happen eventually, but for right now, uh, they don't have it. So, you have to, you're kind of on your own with the database. Now they do recommend, um, uh, the, the, they, just, they recommend to use this MLab, which, which is great, it used to be MongoLab. So if you go there, let's go to MongoLab. Uh, well, I already have that signed up, so you want to see what it looks like. But basically, if you go there, you, you'll see this, you'll create an account, uh, you sign in, um, you create an account, so that's the next step. And then, now we can go to, to this, this is the part where you'll see uh, where, you know, We'll, we will actually do this. So now I've already signed into my Mongolam account. And let's say if you're brand new here, uh, we're going to create a new uh, uh, MongoDB database instance. So go in here. And this is where things get a little bit tricky. So it's not very obvious what you're supposed to be doing here. Uh, the first thing you want to do is you see all the stuff, you're like, oh, $15, oh my God, $3,520, I, I can't, this is like, I, I can't do this. And then you get really depressed, but then you realize you have to click on single node and you have to send <laughs> sandbox, <laughs> right? So this is kind of stuff that's not very straightforward. You kind of know it. And this is one of the reasons I created this tutorial because it's not straightforward, right? So you got to do the sandbox and then uh, do not touch any of these others. Uh, <laughs> uh, and uh, this is also very important because a lot of the other, something that you want to check, if you're thinking about another hosting provider, for example, IBM has, I think it's Blue something, Blue... Blue Mix. Blue Mix. So Blue Mix does not support MongoDB 3.0. Blue Mix only supports the earlier version of MongoDB. So these are the kind of things that you may not be aware of, and that's why you want to go with something that there's probably a reason why Galaxy is recommending this because they support the most recent version of Mongo and probably other reasons as well. Um, so let's just uh, create a database name. A good uh, practice is to give the database name the same name as your app, uh, just a convention. One of the reasons is there are these conventions because you have to remember in a production environment, today I'm working in this database, tomorrow some other guy's gonna work in this database and he's gonna be like, what the hell is that database name? So uh, we're gonna call it deploy me. And just a convention, you can call whatever you want. And now we're going to create our uh, MongoDB uh, database. Oh, oops. So, okay, so there has, there's a requirement there. It has to be a lower case. And I'm going to ask you, you're going to use underscore. Um, okay, like that. Let's zoom out. I think it's actually doing it. Or did it do it? Nope, there we go. So we create our database. And it takes a minute there, and it's still, it's still actually still doing it. It's actually, it, it, it shows me this, you know, some progress. Uh, let's close this up. There's other databases we have here. And the next thing you want to do, now you want to go into the details of this database. So we're going to go into sort of our, this is like our little uh, uh, dashboard for this database. So the next step is, as you can see here, for your, what you're going, this is what you're going to be using to tell Galaxy about your database. 
But as you can see here, one of the requirements is you need to have a user and password. And some people are gonna be confused. They think that that user is the user for their MongoLab account. That is not the user. The user is the user specific to a database. So the way that a database works, which is sort of hidden away with Meteor, is databases have privileges. You have to have a, you have to have a user. You have to have login privileges. And in order to be able to do things, the kind of things that we want to do here, where we want to create you know, new uh, uh, collections and so forth, we need to have admin privileges. And that's something that we need to, we're going to be doing from inside here. So we're going to go in here and create a new user, add database user. And they do actually tell you here. A database user is required to connect to the database. Click here to create a new one. So, but anyway, we just click on the user tab, add a new user. And again, this is you know, just a convention. You can do whatever you want, but uh, a convention is to just have the username be the same uh, as, the, uh, as the database. There are other conventions you want to follow. It's going to be specific to your situation, but that's what I tend to do. So just keep things simple. That's the name of my, my username, the same name as the database itself. And you want to have a secure password. In this case, I'm not going to do it secure. I'm just going to have some, like, I'm actually, I don't know what it's going to allow me to do. We'll see. I'm going to have a very simple password here. We're going to see if it lets it, lets it through. Because otherwise, I'm not going to remember it. Because when it, so this is very important. You're going to need this information for later. So let me see if it did that. Okay, so now, before I forget, this information is actually going to be necessary for later. So I'm going to create a new file, just so that we can start. My user is deploy me password very secure password, ABC123. Um, so, but that's very important. You have to make a note of this because you're gonna need this password uh, in, in a little bit, right? So, okay, so we go in and now we see this. We, ha we have uh, this created a user. Uh, we're, we're good to go. And so we, let's go to our next step here. So we created a database. We went through this whole process. Uh, we did that. Um, we're gonna create a new user, which we're doing here. And so now we're actually going to create a settings file in our Meteor app that's going to tell Meteor about this database. And so in the Galaxy Help Info, um, you can find all this information, but it's scattered all over the place. So this is more just a way of collecting this information in one place. So we're going to go back to our Meteor app. And uh, actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to open it up in, a, in an editor. And as you can see, we just have some default files here. And we're going to create a new file called a settings file. So the settings file, whoops. Zoom out. Yeah, I have to zoom out. So, so the settings file is, you can call this anything you want. But um, basically, this is a file that, we're, that uh, when we deploy, we'll point to this file. Uh, and, and use that as, as, a, as a reference for the information that Galaxy needs. So I cheated a little bit here, and I went in, and I because I didn't want to have to type this again, so I copied this from another app, uh, the, actually the app that I used for the actual uh, uh, the, the demo that I did in the uh, tutorial. But let me talk a little bit about what's going on here. So basically, this is a, a JSON file. Uh, you, sh you, could, you often have a lot of other things in your settings file, uh, so this is what we're doing is it's allowing you to kind of namespace or enclose and say everything within this block relates to Galaxy and you could, I could have other stuff about OAuth, other, you know, environment variables, all kinds of stuff, right? So what we're saying is this is, you know, and related to galaxy.meter.com, um, this is a keyword that they are, you know, basically it's telling you about your environment and you need, these are the two pieces of information that you need to uh, include. What is the root URL, basically the actual URL of the location where people will be going to to view your site? And this was the URL that we had um, from uh, the other, uh, from, from that we're going to look at in a minute. So now we're going to go to, uh, let's see, let this out. So first of all, let me talk about the, this URL. So we talked about, we, ha we could actually pick anything we want now. We just need to make sure that it's something that's available on MeteorApp.com. So let me actually we'll talk a little bit about MeteorApp.com. Normally, up until now, we've been deploying to Meteor.com. You do a free deployment to Meteor.com. That is no longer going to work. Uh, that's going away. So now they have a new domain, MeteorApp.com. Basically, they did what Heroku did from the very beginning 
which is, you know, the Heroku.com domain was synced for Heroku, like Heroku stuff, and they created a separate domain for Heroku apps. So now Meteor is, you know, doing that. Um, and then we're just going to see, I think this is going to be available, but let's, we're going to find out. Deploy, uh, deploy me. And let's, let's just, and this, we don't want that. Let's put in something else. Uh, and now we'll just, just, just a sanity check, let's just go and, you know, just go here and see, make sure that it's available. 404 not found. If you had a custom domain, that it, you would put that here, like, you know, my, you know, my app name .com. That, it would go right here. You also want to be really be thinking about your protocol. If you're using HTTP or HTTPS, that's very important. That needs to be set properly here as well. So let me set this back to where I had it before. So we have that set up. Now we get to the, this somewhat trickier part. That's pretty straightforward. Mm -hmm. The trickier part now is going to be uh, getting uh, this, uh, uh, basically this URI or a universal resource in indicator, or whatever it means, I don't know. Uh, so you have to copy this. This is from the home page for that database. Copy that, put it in here, and then remember I wrote down my info, so I'm gonna forget it. And put that here, and now we need to put that in there and in there. So I'm just gonna paste that in here. So deploy me, so that's the user. So that goes here, whoops. And the password goes here. Like that. And this is the kind of stuff where you want to be pretty, like, this, this is a really, really critical file. And this is one of those things, or one of those common mistakes you're gonna make when you deploy is you're gonna have some silly typo. Like you notice I, I had that little space in here, like stuff like that. Uh, I, I put in something, you know, I, mean, I forget to put a, a comma. Like that's the kind of stuff that's gonna mess you up. Uh, it, it's a really, really critical file. Another thing that I wanna mention that I don't mention in the tutorial, but it's super important. You'll notice I have my password right here. My password is in clear text. It is like right there. Uh, I want to make sure that I do not push this file to Git, GitHub. So the first thing you want to do right now, whoops, is add, you know, git ignore. And, uh, you know, I'm not going to create a, uh, you know, git instant, but, but you know, and, and just make sure that that file is ignored. Super important, super important, because this is like, you know, these are your credentials right here. So really, really important. Okay, so let's continue with uh, the next step in our, okay, so now we've, we've done paying the settings files, we did this part. I talked a little bit here about if you're using a custom uh, domain name and so forth. Uh, we talked about this. Uh, we have our, uh, you know, we did this part here. So now we're actually ready to deploy the app to uh, uh, Galaxy. So here's this long command which, whoops, I'm gonna, See if this works. Uh, I'm just going to try to paste this into a new file there just to make sure if I, I got it. Okay. So now all this information is on the Galaxy website, but you kind of have to cobble it together from different locations and to figure out what is what. So, but this is basically your command, and this is the command that you're going to want to uh, basically. I'm going to put here. You want to run it from the root of your. Uh, uh, of your meter app. So obviously there are some things that we want to change here. And let me talk through what's going on here. So the first thing it, part we're doing here is we're sending an environment variable. Deploy hostname equals galaxy.meteor.com. This is something you can actually do. You don't have to do this every time. Um, you can actually set this as basically you can assign this in your bash uh, settings and, and it'll associate that with this. But uh, it, you know, you can, for reasons that I'll get into a minute, it, it's actually, that's not really gonna save any time. You can just do it this way. Um, so then obviously we have Meteor Deploy. So this is the same keyword. We're continuing with Meteor Deploy that we used before. And now all we need to do, we need to change this to our, to what we had here, right? So deployme.meteorapp.com. And if you had a custom domain, then you would be putting that 
there instead. So this is basically, you put the full domain, deploy me, and here you're saying settings, and this is the location of your settings file. Now I normally recommend putting the settings file like in a private directory and stuff like that, but right now for the purpose of simplicity, um, you know, uh, we'll put it right there. Now, moment of truth, so let's see if this works. Um, and we'll, we'll find out because you know, I'm doing this live. So, uh, Normally it should work, but because I'm doing it live, uh, probably <laughs> it will not. Uh, but if it doesn't, that's also a teachable moment. So, um, so this, this will take a while, especially the first time around. It's doing quite a bit. We have a very tiny file. Okay, so we have, we have an issue. Um, so now what we can do, uh, one way that you can address this issue is, this is actually good, because now I can go in and you can go to, uh, let's go to Galaxy. And we'll see if it, okay, so it didn't even see my app. My app has not even been um, associated yet. So, what's that? Yes, very possible. Uh, so I have that, no. How do you mean the underscore? HTTP uh, deploy underscore. So then you dash underscore, I don't think it's a legal oh. character. Oh, yes, 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 okay, got it, got it, got it, got it, yes. Yes, okay, so let's see, let's try that instead. Okay, so let's try it with this. And the only thing that's checking for here, so first it checks for obviously if these are valid characters, and then it's gonna check for obviously, is this been taken, is this available or not? You know, if some of you already been using it, then it will tell you that. Uh, then it's going to check to see if this file is validly formatted, and if it's validly formatted, then it's going to try to you know uh, uh, use the information that's in that file. So let's see if it gets any further this time around. <coughs> uh, while we're waiting, any questions? Maybe. Okay. So well, well, I guess we're not waiting. Oh, no, no. All right. Let's see. So one thing actually to notice here is even, it might say that it's actually serving it. This may actually not work right away. And the reason uh, it doesn't work is, but at least now it's here. See, it's still, um, I don't have a green dot, right? Now I have a green dot. And so now let's try this again. And there it is, so there it works. So that means it works. So that's it. Any questions? Yes? What about like DNS configuration? So DNS configuration is uh, essentially, uh, I, I do talk, actually I talk about it here, uh, but at a very high level, uh, you will effectively set your, um, set the DNS, probably set a C name in right. your registrar, uh, and then you will point that to galaxyingress.media.com. Uh, and that will then make the association. Um, but I, I found a link here where you can learn more about that. But it, it's pretty straightforward as, as I understand it. Yeah. Uh, I would definitely recommend adding the uh, settings.json, like that git ignore, to your tutorial. Yeah. Um, but my question is about the pricing of Galaxy. Yeah. Um, it was a little bit interesting because it seemed like there was like zero cost, but I know Galaxy oh, no. has a cost. It's not zero cost. Yeah. So yeah, thanks for mentioning that. So, um, so the question is, it seems like Galaxy is zero cost. It, it's actually not zero cost. So let's go back to, uh, let's see if I can get back to. What was all that free stuff? Uh, so it wasn't, yeah. Um, <laughs> Meteor.com, let's go to Meteor.com and then we can actually just go to services, Meteor Galaxy, C plans and pricing. So it's pay as you go. So what this really means is, I think it's something like the price of a cheeseburger for, you know. It's basically, this is, this is, this is effectively gonna be about a cheeseburger's worth, that, but it also depends on the amount of traffic you have. So, um, you know, this is one of those situations where you don't, you want people to like, um, just stop by, but don't, don't stay too long. <laughs> uh, because this is something that's, oh by the way, this is something that's different for a real-time app compared to a traditional client-server app. Uh, with a real-time app, 
we, that you have a continuous live stream as opposed to a server that is just serving up something and then it's kind of done. It just sits and waits for the next request. That is not the case here. So you are paying for con continuous real-time updates and that's, so it's a different uh, pricing model. Uh, and, and, and the way the things are charged for are different. So something to keep in mind. Could you scroll down to the uh, support options? That's where I was seeing the zero. Oh. Yeah, the basic. Yeah, what do you get for that? Uh, oh, um, well, you, you could wait, you have to wait up to two days for a response. And you don't have a critical, what's called SLA means service license agreement. So they're not making any promises Basically, what they're saying is they're not making any pro like if you have a critical service license agreement, that means that they have promised you that your first their firstborn your firstborn child that they, you, your site will not go down. Basically, uh, they will they will not do that for this level. You have to pay uh, ninety nine dollars for the firstborn child. No, the, no, the next one. one. Oh, no, for this. Okay, oh, I have to pay. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. So critical SLA means. It like it is, they have redundancies in place, and it is yes, it's a business critical system, and it's usually critical SLA means like you have a system that people are using for their job, like it's not like I'm just a fun tool like oh it's cool you know it's like they need this app this app has to run, that's critical SLA. So anything else? Oh uh, yes. Yeah, that environmental variable that you mentioned. Yeah. Uh, do you have any more information about that? That sounds like you can like deploy to a server that isn't like Meteor.com. Like, I do not Meteor know. Do I do not know more that about, seems about like that. Really interesting to me. Yeah, like, I do like, not. Yes. Repeat the question again. Yeah. Uh, they have, do I have more information about the environment variable that I mentioned? And, and I, I don't actually. Uh, the, the the support information that's available on the Galaxy site is very very sparse. Uh, so. And that was one of the reasons I, that prompted me to want to create this tutorial. Was it gentleman in the back? For that purpose, would it be better to go something along the Google Cloud developers? Because also their cost seems to be... So, so the question is, for this purpose, if would, it be, would it make sense to go with an option that is different from uh, another, go with a different, another provider? One thing that's very important to understand is I tested uh, um, deploying the upcoming beta version of Meteor uh, to a few different providers, the only place where I was able to get it to work was Galaxy. Um, for example, on Heroku, it does not work because the build pack for Heroku does not support the most recent version. In order to get it to work, you will have to personally customize it. And that's even what the creator of the build pack says. It's like, eh, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna update for 1.3 yet. It's like, eh, you, you, wanna, you wanna work for 1.3? You update the build pack. So. That's the kind of situation you're dealing with, and that's one reason to pick Galaxy. But um, to be honest, I have not tested it with um, uh, uh, DigitalOcean, and it may work just flawlessly with DigitalOcean. I don't know. Yeah. Did you ever try Chaz? Oh, there was one in the back. Sorry. Yeah. And there's this gentleman afterwards, and then Chaz. Yeah. First of all, great presentation tutorial. All right. Thank you. Yeah. Second, so what's the reason behind why they decided to get rid of the uh, no idea. There's a huge discussion uh, that on the, you go to the forums. Um, I posted a long post on Medium about that. I think it, I personally thought you know wasn't a great decision, but that was their decision, and that's you know that was up up, up to them, and I'm sure they had their reasons. So the question, the, question was, the question was why did they choose to uh, uh, discontinue free uh, free uh, uh, hosting? Okay. okay, there's this gentleman, Chaz, and then this gentleman with the hat. So go ahead. So I mean, I have no idea how the current um, deployment works. So you know, you deploy and data. So the, way, the current deployment is basically I can just do it right now. So it's yeah. Meteor. Well, I mean, besides that, I'm saying deploy. I just want so for people oh. who don't know, Meteor deploy, deploy. <laughs> Let me actually do it right now. Let's see if it works. Well, deploy. So oh, deploy. Oh, that's a, that's, that's my <laughs> own. Yeah. So Meteor uh, is all spelled. I can't I can't spell anything. <laughs> uh, meteor deploy deploy me dot meteor dot com. So while you're asking that question, oh, I got so close. I was so close. That was the Italian hosting site. Yes, <laughs> yes, and that's going to be the new site. That's going to take Wait. Oh my God. No, no, that no, no, not underscore. We don't want it to be underscore. Okay, how does that look? Does that look yep, okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So while, while 
the next person asking a question, that's that's how you currently do it. My so, question yes. was, do you think there are any like performance um, sort of um, like diminishes with the, the current uh, setup that you have to now go to some other database provider, and that's a bit, that's not sitting on your. Wait, server. so let, let me make sure I understand your question. Are you saying the performance diminishes with the existing free version no, or with the new version? With with your new with the new method of going to another database provider. Right. So the question is about performance it, with when going with with. When you say the new database provider, you mean like uh, MLab so or are you, are you meaning performance in terms of developer performance? Developer? No, I'm um, so sort of like the, the performance yeah, of performance. accessing and getting information from the database. Yeah, okay. so, so the question is about performance when you're going with a separate database versus, for example, this model. Um, I'm not really an expert on that, but I would venture to say that performance is probably going to be significantly better with the model that I just showed you compared to this. This free hosting is. And they're upfront about that, that this is not uh, high quality, it's not intended for that, it's for a, a toy app, a demo app, an MVP, a test. So what I showed you, just that, remember, I'm, it, it's a paid option too, it's probably gonna be significantly better than, than this. Okay, Chaz, and then what's your name again? Uh, Matt. Matt, and then uh, Greg and then Adrian. I'm just curious to know if you tried modules. I did not, the question was if I tried Modulus, I did not try Modulus. The only database option I tried was, was Mongo Lab. And I've heard great things about Mo Modulus. There are many other uh, Mongo options. The reason I went with Mongo Lab was because that was one that Galaxy recommended and they had the free, they had that free uh, option. Just, you know, I just thought, what the hell, just let me just do it. Matt? Um, just going back to them dropping the free hosting, I remember reading somewhere that they, they simply said that, uh, and you, you may know this too, that it was just distracting them from development of things like Galaxy and Apollo, and uh, that they were spending resources on it that they didn't want to spend anymore. So okay. So it wasn't really a question, but I'll just basically reiterate that uh, uh, you, you were saying that it, it was the reason might have been because it was concerned about dedicating resources, and they only limited resources, and they wanted to dedicate it to something else. So that's a certainly one possibility. Again, I recommend going on the forums, uh, and, and uh, you can read more about it there. Correct. So yeah, I just want to give a quick response to the database question. So when when you go and you select the cheapest option there in MLab, then that's going to take a hit because on your performance, because uh, you're not using the uplog event, so you don't have need to have those uh, the, the multiple yes. server setups. So that way you're using. Um, that those servers are going to uh, duplicate themselves so that they have to use the op log, and then the media, the media will take advantage of that, and that's going to be really nicely set up for you at Galaxy. Uh, or, and the same thing would be true at like, Compose.io, but if you do the very cheapest at MLab, then that won't be the case. That would certainly be a hit. Yes, so, so basically, uh, uh, Greg was just mentioning that, uh, you know, one thing, to, in terms of getting back to the performance question, one thing that you do not get with the sandbox option is you don't know, go, don't get what's called <coughs> op-log tailing, which is one of the things that allows for Meteor to have a highly performant uh, real-time reactive uh, updates. So it probably will revert back to what's called pull and diff, which is a somewhat less fast scalable model. It still works, but you don't get it. So there are certain things that are intrinsic to Meteor and it is what makes Meteor powerful that you do not get with the model that I proposed. But that's also, it's free, so that's probably one of the reasons why. And, and uh, this is part of not, when you, you don't pay for something, you know, then that's what you get what you pay for or don't pay for. Yeah. Also related to performance is uh, how close the web server is to the database. You, for MLab, you chose AWS as your hosting location for that database. Have they mentioned where Galaxy is hosted? Is that an option? Uh, I have not looked into that, but I, as I recall, I you, think they have a couple of different options. Oh, the question was regarding location. So I, I just picked the default location that MongoLab provided, which was AWS East, I think. And the question is, where does uh, where does Galaxy uh, host their servers? Because the location can impact uh, speed. So it's just something to be thinking about. Off the top of my head, I don't know what, what those what those locations are. But when you're doing this, something to to look into and think about. Oh. Uh, that make sure that they're basically geographically co-located somewhat to the greatest extent possible. All right, thank you, Anders. All right, appreciate Thanks. this.